Hello, yeah, so I thought I'd just do uh, another quick video about my Unraid configuration because there are a few things that I had to kind of play with um, to get them working and how I wanted. Most around how the uh, the VMs were actually working. So if I just show you, I've got a w Windows VM. My original plan was to pass through this graphics card to it. So it's a NVIDIA GeForce GT 710. And in my unmade system, I had two graphics cards. One was this 710, and then the other was uh, an old Matrox G550. And the intention was to use the G550 for unraid to output to a monitor if I needed that. I very rarely need that, but that was the idea. And then pass the GT710 through to, well, VMs, mostly Windows. And it turned out that actually, unfortunately, the motherboard I have, which is the the Chinese the Dual X99, the exact model number I've uh, forgotten, you can't pick which um, GPU is the primary one used for booting. So you can't pick a PCI slot for booting, etc. So what that means is that I couldn't stop it from uh, using the GT710 for Unraid, uh, even though I had two GPUs in there. That was causing problems when I actually came to passing it through. So what I had to do in the end was fiddle about a little bit. Um, let's just go to boot configuration. So you can see here that I had to tweak the boot configuration. I've done it for Unraid and Unraid in GUI mode. And the first bit of this passes through a USB controller to my, or rather allows me to pass USB uh, card through to um, my VMs. And this is the bit I had to add. So to get Unraid to stop it from using that NVIDIA GT710, I had to add that to the boot config. Actually, I've only done it to the, the non-GUI mode, but um, I never use the GUI mode anyway. So I had to put that into the boot config, and that event uh, essentially stops Unraid from booting off that GPU and leaves it free. And then it will pass through more successfully to my VMs. This might not be necessary for all GPUs, but it seemed to be in the case of this one. Um, the configuration for the GPU itself is pretty standard. Uh, in fact, if you look at Space Invader 1 videos, uh, he's got much better videos about how to do the rest of the passing through. thing to remember for me was just to... Let's have a quick try and find the GPU section. There it is. It's to make sure that you have the multifunction on and then function one and uh, zero and one of the card. Otherwise, it's likely not to work. But once I'd got that configured, I did put a BIOS in there that I got uh, that matches the card I have. Um, that might not be necessary. But the thing that fixed it was changing this. So I needed that in there. It does mean that it doesn't quite work how I wanted. So I was quite keen on being able to have a GPU for Unraid in there. And I did find an old G550 Matrox card that was a PCI-1 card. So it was quite a nice idea, but it didn't work quite as I intended. Because like I said in the BIOS, I can't pick PCI, that PCI card as the primary. It defaults to looking for one that's in one of the 16 time slots, which makes sense in a way. But the other 16 times slot, I've got a hard drive controller in. Once I'd done this, um, the system worked pretty well. So uh, if I load the windows up, So I just RDP into the Windows box normally. And if I go to Device Manager, which handily is one of the last things I went to, 
you can see in the display adapters that the matrix uh, the nvidia card rather is detected fine and working not getting that annoying error code which is quite common so it all works fine so i got what i sort of wanted in the end this is the only uh virtual machine that i pass the card through to anyway the linux ones that i have on the system i don't really need the gpu functionality but it does mean that that matrox card isn't really doing anything so i suppose i could pass it through to something if i wanted to and i've just left it in there for now uh, but it wasn't quite as neat as i intended but who knows yeah you know, that's that's life and it all works pretty well haven't made any changes to the system other than that uh, I've started adding more virtual machines. I've been playing around with some clustering. So I've got uh, virtual machines for practicing coding clustering programs. And that's a good kind of testing environment for my work. And I can mess about. I'm actually looking at uh, using channels to pass data between Go programs, which is Golang programs, which is quite fun. So it's a really cool system and I'm it's it's doing what I wanted to do basically. So I'll leave it there. Thanks for listening and I'll see you in the next video.